Welcome to the Golden State Media Concepts, America's Still Beautiful Podcast, a weekly news podcast covering all the top positive and uplifting news stories. Are you tired of the same old news? Are you sick of the seemingly endless political spin and negativity? We cover stories that will inspire, uplift, and remind you of the good in the world. Tune into the Golden State Media Concepts, America's Still Beautiful Podcast to get all the great and positive news stories of today. Hello, friends, and welcome to another episode of America Still Beautiful, a GSMC podcast. I'm your host today, Brooklyn, and I'm happy to be here, happy to share with you the happy stories that we have on the agenda. Well, it's Tuesday. Happy September! September 1st. It's officially a new month. So exciting. And hey, you're cruising through 2020. There's lots of good things happening. And we have a lot of them on the schedule today. So, but let's talk about that for a second. It is September. Wow. I mean, I know the autumnal equinox or, yeah, so autumn doesn't start until about three more weeks from now. But I know culturally we really get started and retailers go hard on the fall type marketing. So, you're already seeing pumpkin spice, rice crispy treat, toothpaste, or whatever you're seeing out there. Um, lots of ads for fall clothes and Halloween decorations at the store. Even some Christmas decorations at Costco the other day. Come on. Um, don't get me wrong. I absolutely love fall. Love the coziness and everything. The whole aesthetic. But, um, yeah, I think it's a little early to be like, pumpkin spice latte up everything, but no shame. You do what you want to do. And hey, I hope that you like September and that you're not like, wake me up when September ends, right? (laughs) Well, let's hear a little bit about September, shall we? September used to be the seventh month on the original Roman calendar. Did you know that? Makes sense because September, like sept is French for seven, which probably means it's a Latin root or something. So September used to be the seventh month. That would be easy to remember. (laughs) But, uh, Later, when January and February February were added to the calendar, it became the ninth month. When the British changed from the Julian calendar to the Gregorian calendar in 1752, they needed to adjust some days to get the seasons aligned with the months. Interesting. They took 11 days of from the month of September, jumping directly from September 3rd to 14th. And so it's as if the days between September 3rd and 13th during 1752 never even happened in British history. That is really interesting. So that, that's just crazy how they just decided like, okay, this is not going to be what time is. And so that kind of messes up dates as we know it. Right. But, um, this article comes from Dexters.com. It's letting us know some facts about September and it um, puts September in some other languages. And most of them are kind of looking like the same root in Spanish, Latin, Italian, French, and Danish, all kind of some variation of September, September, September. Okay. I'm going to stop embarrassing myself, but I will say that the, the one way I know how to say September in a different language is Kugatsu. So Kugatsu is September in Japanese, and it's just so much easier to remember the names of um, the names of the months in Japanese than it might be learning the names of the months in a different language because it's literally just the number of month it is, and then month. So Gatsu is like month, or the kanji comes from moon, so kind of like the moon cycle through the month, right? But it's just month, gatsu, and then right before it comes the number. So ku uh, comes from q, which is nine, q, gatsu. But when you put it together with another kanji, it's kugatsu. So if you want to be all Japanese fancy, you can say, hey, happy kugatsu. Yeah. (laughs) 
Well, here's some fun facts about September. It is the first month of autumn or the fall season. Um, September in the Northern Hemisphere is similar to March in the Southern heavens- Hemisphere. So that's that's really interesting. Have you ever thought about how um, people living in a different hemisphere have seasons totally opposite? I always wondered what it's like to have like the middle of summer be Christmas time for those who celebrate Christmas in the Southern Hemisphere. Like... I'm curious what that is like. So that's fascinating that September is kind of like March in the Southern Hemisphere. American college and professional football begins during the month of September. Oh yeah, I'm excited for football for however long (laughs) we get to have it. Uh, We're trying to maintain hope there, but it's going to be an exciting kickoff coming up here in just a a few days. Many kids begin school during this month. A lot of kids in my state started about 10 days ago or one week ago, but I also know some schools that wait until September 5th. Um, and Teacher's Day is celebrated on in on September 5th in India. What a great holiday. The Anglo-Saxons called this month the Gerst Monath, meaning barely month. This is because they would harvest... Oh, <laughs> how embarrassing. It means barley month. This is because they would harvest their barley crops during the month. All right. Doing amazing on reading comprehension, y'all. So September is also often associated with fire because it was the month of the Roman god Vulcan. Vulcan was the Roman god of fire and forge. How interesting is that? So there, I just thought that might be fun to go over some fun facts about September um, as we head into this new month here. So, hey, pretty cool history, right? Um, and you know I got a holiday right now for September 1st. And it is the one and only American Chess Day. <laughs> I mean, impressive. I, I love learning about like what holidays we actually have here uh, because there are so many nationally declared holidays. And, you know, maybe not you're not getting the day off work to celebrate National Chess Day. Um, but Labor Day is coming up soon, so maybe you can play some chess if you're into it. I'm embarrassed. I don't think I've ever really played chess before. I'm all about that epic scene in Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone um, when they play the chess. But um, it's just, it's a game I haven't jumped on. But I know that there was a chess club in my middle school, and the German teacher was the advisor for that. And they, I mean, they seemed like they had a ton of fun, and they even won some competitions. So kudos to them. Uh, so we have some exciting little info about chess, uh, National Chess Day. It's a game of strategy and skill, and chess is played the world over by young and old alike. To play, two opponents face off across checkers style board and take turns using their pieces of kings, queens, rooks, knights, bishops, and pawns to move along the 64 square board. I think I could name like what, which piece, like what name each piece is. But I couldn't quite tell you the rules. I know you want to do some jumping around and getting to the other side of the board. But yeah, this is embarrassing for those of you who know chess and you're like, what? Why are you even talking about this? But I think it's interesting that it has its own holiday. So fans in the U.S. have had a chance to celebrate their love for the pastime chess on American Chess Day. And the first notion of this holiday was actually in 1950, 70 years ago. Alan Turning wrote the first chess computer program. Wow. Um, The birth of the modern game was back in uh, 1470, between 1475 and 1500, where rules for the game um, were developed as we play them today. So just so interesting that it is such a, a... classic American game. It really has been many, many years. So we even have some activities suggested here on nationaltoday.com. You can host your own chess tournament. Maybe that would be something cool you could do over the internet because I bet you can play chess online. You could visit the chess district or at least make plans to visit it in New York City where you can immerse yourself in an entire neighborhood that treats every day like American Chess Day. You play a game on one of the famed outdoor tables in Washington Square Park. You can check out the village chess shop where you can buy chess sets from all over the world. Or you can take a walk to the Marshall Chess Club, one of the oldest chess clubs in the United States and a frequent site of the U.S. Chess Championship. 
And the last、uh, suggestion is to teach a new player. Hey, that sounds like a good idea. Maybe I'll ask somebody to teach me how to play chess tonight. That will be really fun. So, happy National Chess Day, especially to all you avid players. I hope that you have a really great one. We're gonna go right into some rapid fire round of positive news because Positive Dot News has a little like an article about some micro. Micro reportings of stories that、um, about things that really went right this week. So I want to share them with you because they're all really great stories.、Um, first of all, a project launched to tackle digital exclusion among homeless people. The homeless charity crisis announced this week that it will give away seven hundred million no seven hundred. <laughs> Seven hundred thousand dollars worth of smartphones and data to homeless people within the next twelve months, which is a part of a drive to tackle social isolation and digital exclusion. With many services going online to stop the spread of coronavirus, the pandemic was highlighted、uh, has highlighted the growing issue of digital exclusion among vulnerable groups, including the estimated three hundred thousand homeless people currently living in the United Kingdom. Wow. <laughs> I mean, and it's hard because the deeper you look into the virus, the more far-reaching effects it has, right? But、uh, there's happy and hopeful parts like this as well. Now, John Sparks is the chief executive of Crisis, and he said the handsets would quote ensure a far greater number of people experiencing homelessness across Great Britain can connect with Crisis and other vital services to help them end their homelessness for good. So, wow, what a really great、um, thing! To have happen, all right. Keeping with the rapid fire,、uh, like theme here, <laughs> we're gonna go and say、um, that we're gonna go into this one. This one is really important to me. A study has offered hope for better breast cancer treatment. Women with breast cancer who, who receive a single dose of radiotherapy straight after surgery experience the same benefits as patients who will go through weeks of debilitating treatment. Oh, interesting. According to a study published by the British Medical Journal. Um, monitored the progress of 2,200 women with early stage breast cancer. After having the lump removed, participants in the study were given a single shot of targeted intraoperative radiotherapy, a treatment that is increasingly being used to treat breast cancer. Eight out of the ten women, eight out of ten women, that's the rate,、um, needed no further radiotherapy, sparing them from weeks of painful and exhausting treatments at the hospital. Wow, this is such good news. Many. Um, family members close to me have suffered through、um, breast cancer, and also the treatments towards it were so very. I'm so grateful that there are treatments,、um, but boy, is it a it is it is a really difficult process. So it's so exciting to see that with all the research going into it, there are、um, good outcomes appearing out of all that. So, all right, next up we've got Elise. Um, being granted for a floating wind farm in Wales. Um, what? That sounds futuristic as heck. There were more. There's more positive news for renewables this week with the announcement that Wales is going to get its first floating wind farm. The Crown Estate, which manages the seabed around England, Wales, and Northern Ireland, has granted two new leases for wind farms in Welsh waters, including one that will float on the sea. Wow! What a great use of space. <laughs> Floating wind farms could play an important role in meeting global energy demand through re- renewables because they can be installed in deep water where seabed foundations are prohibitively expensive to build. How innovative is that? The Crown Estate also granted rights for a ten thousand six hundred hectare yeah hectare extension to the Gwent. Um, offshore wind farm in North Wales, which is already the fifth largest offshore wind farm in the world. Wow! How amazing. Okay, last up, I love this one. Free counselling was made available to healthcare workers. A charity set up by the NHS in the UK、um, is set up to support their colleagues, and it will provide up to six hundred hours of free counselling each week to healthcare workers. In the Midlands, where staff are reportedly less likely to seek support rather than those working elsewhere, the charity, which is called Heroes, was co-founded by Dr. Dominic Pimenta, who has been working on in a COVID-19 intensive care unit since the pandemic started, as well as offering free counseling. The charity provides PPE and free childcare to health workers. Wow! 
wow, that is so wonderful. Dr. Pimenta says, our experience has shown that the NHS staff in the Midlands have been less likely to come forward for support. We are keen to make sure that healthcare workers across the region know they can come to us for support with counseling, childcare, or even financial goals. Wow, all of this is really great. And so I'm so excited that uh, that is, a, is an option for healthcare workers because obviously they deserve and often need counseling, um, although they might not know how to access it. Okay, it is time for our first break, folks, but when we come back, we will have more happiness to carry us into September because some local people and companies are doing big, unique things to help put food on the tables of people that need it most. You'll hear all about that right after this. The GSMC Life and Happiness Podcast takes you on a journey of exploration. We'll discuss tried and true methods alongside the latest trends of how to best live your life to its fullest and happiest. From psychology to meditation, science to self-help books, the GSMC Life and Happiness Podcast will help you to discover what makes you happy and how you can live life being the best you possible. Download the GSMC Life and Happiness Podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or anywhere you find podcasts. Just type GSMC in the search bar. Welcome back to America Still Beautiful, of course, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. Green is the new black. Did you know? <laughs> this is an exciting article from Positive.News, and they're letting us know about how different fashion designers are using eco-friendly options in their fashion designs. It's very exciting. Earlier this year, as fashion brands released their summer collections, H&M brought out a dress that raised eyebrows, not because the frock was particularly risque, but because it was made from biodegradable pulp. Wow. The material, which is circulose, is the creation of Swedish startup New Cell, which is part of a new breed of biotech brands dedicated to making fashion more sustainable. It works like this. Regarding New Call, takes out takes worn out clothes to its plant in Sweden, where they debutton, shred, and strip of dye and plastics the furniture and turn it into a slurry. And this is explained by the chief marketing officer, Harold Cavalli Borkman. What's left is cellu cell cellulose, a biodegradable organic polymer that all green plants are made out of. This slurry is dried to produce thin sheets of pulp, which are then turned into natural textile fibers. The process is very efficient. One kilo of used cotton because becomes one kilo of new circulose textile fibers, says Borkman. Wow, that's really amazing. Usually the turnover is not that good in these kind of recycling things. Now for the H&M dress, um, re new cells first commercial product, the team blended the pulp with wood fibers sourced from sustainably managed forests. Cavalli Borkman says there are more partnerships with well-known fashion brands, um, and there are more partnerships in the pipeline for 2020, and it hopes to be producing large enough volumes of its pulp to make the entire garment. Here are some other biotechnology innovations that could make the clothes more sustainable. Synthetic spider silk is a first idea. It's just a fraction of a millimeter thick and five times stronger than steel, but until recently, it's been impossible to mass produce spider silk. The arachnids are fiercely territorial, territorial and cannibalistic. Yikes! After 10 years of painstaking research and development, Japanese biotech startup Spiber has worked out a way to make an equivalent material in a lab. Wow, that's amazing. That can make it way more efficient. The process begins by genetically modifying the DNA of microbes to create proteins. Um, so Spiber's Thomas 
Threlfo says, We then feed these microbes with sugars and other nutrients in big vats, which results in a fermentation process similar to brewing beer. Now, the resulting substance is purified and dried into a powder, which is further processed to create sustainable fibers, gels, synthetics, and le- synthetics, leathers, and more. According to Threlfo, synthetic silk has the potential to boost sustainability in fashion. It's already caught the eye of global brands. In 2019, Spiber collaborated with North Face to create the Moon Parker, which is like a coat. It's pretty amazing. I I really love that companies and technology is going in this direction because, um, like, if you haven't really thought about it or seen it or th- heard it before, like, there are a lot of companies that are deemed fast fashion, and that's when materials are cheaply made, um, cheap in materials and cheap in labor, so it's not sustainable for companies, workers, and the the piece of clothing it doesn't last long either. Um, but it's just, it's easy to do, and so a lot of stores have these quickly made items. But of course, it's always preferable to have something quality, and if you can, environmentally friendly. So, I love it. This article actually continues. <clears throat> Berlin-based studio Blonde and Bieber has developed an all-natural alternative to toxic clothing dyes made from algae. Hey, what a great use for that. Currently, up to 8,000 synthetic chemicals are used by the fashion and footwear sector, which can be hazardous to work to, to work with and risk polluting water systems. Things you don't even really think about, huh? By extracting pigments from various freshwater microalgae, it's possible to create an enormously wide range of non-toxic, non-toxic colors, according to Blount and Bieber's founder, Rasa Weber. The algae are grown in bioreactors. Pigments are then extracted and turned into dyes. She says, we call them living colors. Since they react with oxygen and sunlight, they're actually changing over time. Wow, that is so amazing. The design team has already collaborated with fashion brands on algae-inspired collections, such as menswear, the menswear company Volbeck, which Blonde and Bieber loves to collaborate with. Okay, and... Uh, the last one on this amazing green train for fashion is corn-based footwear. Petroleum-based materials run riot in trainers. Vivo Barefoot reckons it has a solution. In 2019, the footwear brand launched the Primus Light 2 Bio, reportedly one of the world's least petroleum-reliant shoes. The body of the shoe is made from plant-based material extracted from yellow field corn created by U.S.-based biomaterial manufacturer. Oh, this is just so amazing. Um, The shoe is also stitched with plant-based fibers and has natural rubber sole on the foam insulation that's created partly from algae cleared from freshwater bodies under algae management programs. The algae is then dried, refined, and utilized as non-petroleum-based alternative material. Wow, I think that is so awesome. So, hey, if um, you feel like it's something that is important to you, you can maybe put a little bit more thought into where you're getting your clothes and how you recycle them as well. Okay, I have back-to-back stories about how amazing people are working to help distribute food to those who need it most. First, we're flying over to Aurora, Colorado. Residents can stop by Wow, Bonsi Valley High School in Aurora on Saturday to pick up free meals of chicken and rice. Two of your food groups right there. Boom. Protein and grains. Volunteers from Laborers International Union of North America Local 68 are expected to hand out more than 20 tons of chicken and rice at a food distribution event hosted by State State Representative Karina Villa or Via. The event at the high school um, on Ogden Avenue is set to run from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m., although it could end earlier if the food is all handed out by them. The food is being donated by Amigos Meat and Martin Produce. And it's 42,000 pounds of food, which is ready to be delivered on Saturday to those in Aurora. I just love reading about this event. I know it's kind of similar each time, but it's so inspiring to hear how people are organizing these types of events everywhere in the world and especially in our great country. So 
I love hearing about that. And let's hear a little bit more about that. Kingsford is opening a $5,000 tab at Jones Barbecue this weekend to provide free meals in Kansas City, Missouri. Wow. Oh, I'm totally wrong. It's Kansas City, Kansas. <laughs> Sorry, forgive me. We're going to Kansas. Kansas City, Kansas local story. Um, this comes to us from KNBC 9 News. Represent representatives for Kingsford Charcoal says the company is opening a tab at the most uh, um, at a popular area barbecue restaurant this weekend to provide some financial relief to barbecue lovers. The company is opening a $5,000 tab at Jones Barbecue in Kansas City, starting at 11 a.m. Saturday and running till 3 p.m. or until they're sold out. Officials say the tab will cover the cost of any menu item, including ribs or combo plate, limit one per customer. The tab comes after the company already provided a $10,000 grant to Jones Barbecue, which restaurant owners used to cover taxes and payroll shortages resulting from coronavirus restrictions. The company also used the grant to put together bags of food for community giveaway, and they provided food for Sinclair School of Nursing in the University of Missouri. If you are nearby but you can't make it to the Saturday event, Kingsford representative said Jones Barbecue is also providing a great recipe for their ribs along with grilling tips as a part of the Kingsford Famous Bites series, including well-known pitmasters across the country. So, hey, that is really cool. If you want a recipe and you're not near Kansas City, you can look that up and find the recipe for yourself. Oh, yum. That sounds amazing. I, again, I just love reading about people feeding each other because really the resources are there. And while people try to get back on their feet, I think it's great when people share what they have in excess. All right. This is really an, uh, the next story is very inspiring for the environment. It's a supermarket that has pledged to ditch plastic bags. The supermarket chain Morrison's is planning to phase out plastic bags for life, following evidence that customers are using them only once. They will be replaced by paper carriers, which are easier to recycle. While the campaigners welcomed news that the supermarket intends to axe plastic bags, Friends of Earth warned that all single-use items have an ecological footprint. Uh, they say, while the UK facing a waste crisis is crucial that more of our products are used again rather than simply chucked away. So that's what they're going for. They are hoping to encourage people more and more to bring in their own bags. And oh, I think, I think this is such, it seems like such an easy and simple change to make, but oh, confession time. I always, A-L-W-A-Y-S, always forget my bags. I have a few good, you know, reusable grocery bags and even some produce bags. Very cool. These are very easy swaps to make. I just got to stick them in my car and then I need to remember to bring them out of the car into the grocery store. Oh, I'm so embarrassed. And so I have like just a horrible amount of plastic bags because I don't want to just throw them away. So I try to use them here and there where I can. To, so I'm recycling, but Anyway, it's one of my goals, and if any of you have a suggestion of how to remember to take your bags, that would be so helpful. <laughs> so, truly, we are lucky to be alive in 2020. We have come so far, and the positive news helps us to continue to move forward. I hope you're feeling that a little bit. As soon as we move forward through this next break, I'll have even more positivity for you coming right up. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. Hey! The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play.
to our podcast. Very excited to be sharing with you some stories. And this actually is not an ASMR podcast, so I'm going to return to my normal voice here. All right. More great stories are coming right up here on America. Still beautiful. We're going to go to a teen, Ariella Pacheco, who has made some really amazing dolls that increase representation for the kids that need them the most. Oh, I love this story. Most little girls love dolls. When 17-year-old Aurelia was growing up, she was no exception. Exception, Since kids tend to bond best with dolls that resemble them, the American girl doll Pacheco chose for herself looked like it could have been her sister. She said, she looked like me and I felt like there was a piece of me in her. Now that she's a senior at Cathedral Catholic High School, she told the San Diego Union Tribune, you see yourself in a doll and it's really special to have that connection. Children find comfort and connection interacting with dolls that reflect their own physical image as well as their racial and cultural heritage. But until recently, finding diversity when shopping for them has been difficult. While the mass market selections have become increasingly in- inclusive in recent years, some segments of the population continue to be excluded. Children's who, children whose rare medical conditions render their appearances different from the norm have little to no hope of finding their likeness at a toy store or even online. Knowing just how important making that very personal connection could be for a child gave Ariella an idea. Inspired by Milwaukee doll designer Amy Jandrasevitz, whose A Doll Like Me project makes custom-designed dolls for children with disabilities, Pacheco decided that for her annual service project for her school's National Honor Society chapter, she would design and sew unique dolls to donate to children with rare medical conditions. This girl has a heart of gold! How sweet is that? So to find the kids she hoped to create unique dolls for, Ariella partnered with Fresh Start Surgical Gifts in Carlsbad, California, a charitable organization that provides surgical and medical treatment free of charge to children who need it. Pacheco was sent pictures and profiles for a number of potential doll subjects from the ranks of Fresh Start's clients. She eventually narrowed the field to four. The dolls she designed feature one with port wine with a port wine birthmark, another with surgical scars, one with jaw alignment issues, and one with facial and cranial abnormalities. Michelle Pius, Fresh Start's chief development officer, was, quote, blown away by the final product. It was very kind and big-hearted gesture on her part to make the dolls that will help a child feel like they're not alone, she said. Before getting started, Pacheco this is Ariel, Ariella Pacheco, scoured YouTube for sewing and pattern making tutorials and read up on her subject's favorite pastimes and, per, and preferred color palettes. Her goal was to ensure the kids could see themselves in her creations, but she didn't want the things that set them apart from their peers to be the doll's most obvious feature. She said, the whole time I was trying to put as much love into it as I could and hoped they represented each child faithfully. I really value the beauty and little things. Each of these kids is so unique, so special. I hope that these dolls can, and through these dolls, the kids can see themselves in a new light and really embrace their beauty. This story was so moving to me because this girl just has seriously a heart of absolute gold. She cares so much and she shared, she took an experience that she had as a kid that was positive and tried to think of a way that it could be shared with somebody else to give them a similar experience as well. I thought that was so special. And you can see a really great video of her um, either from that San Diego newspaper or on the goodnewsnetwork.org. She shows her dolls as well. And they are so adorable. I can't believe that she like learned on YouTube how to sew them because they, they really look professional. I would totally buy these if I had a little one that would like dolls. Anyway, so cute and good for you, Ariella. I just love it. We have two more other great stories about people that have created something special. So would you like to get right to it? All right. Well, I assume you said yes, since you're still listening. So this is a great story about a gardener who has grown Britain's biggest tomato using 
pantyhose. <laughs> it's a rather unconventional method, as far as I'm aware, for I am not yet a gardener. A green-fingered father has broken the record for growing Brit Britain's largest tomato with some help of some sheer pantyhose. Hertfordshire's Douglas Smith sent, spent about two months carefully growing the giant tomato, which is, in fact, six regular beefsteak tomatoes fused into one. <laughs> the huge fruit, which had to be suspended using a pair of tights so it didn't fall off the stem, weighed 3.106 kilograms and measured at 27.5 inches in circumference. Wow, that's amazing. I, I'm going to guess that's like eight pounds in pounds, but don't quote me on that. Use a Google converter. <laughs> 3.1 kilograms. It was grown from a seed variety known as Big Zack. Douglas's giant fruit has edged him ahead of the previous UK record holder, Peter Glazebrook, whose record-winning tomato last year weighed 2.9 kilograms. Oh, he's bumped off the board. <laughs> now, Douglas said about his tomato, Giant tomatoes have been my main focus in terms of competitive veg vegetable growing. My attempts have just been just shy of Glazebrook's each time. But this time, I finally edged it. Ooh, he sounds very competitive in his tomato producing. They've got a really cool photo here of like a little cherry tomato, a regular tomato, beef stick tomato, and then this humongous tomato. It really is a sight to see. So how did the forty eight? How did the forty two year old do it? What is his trade secret? He did it methodically. He got seeds from. U.S. tomato grower Larry Hill from Minnesota, USA, who yielded the seeds from his own 3.47 kilogram tomato plant. He cut back any other flowers on the plant to maximize all the growth into one mega shoot. He watered his tomato plant at least once every day for over two months, using water with a bit of liquid seaweed mix. He also gave the plant a weekly compost tea feed. Oh my goodness, this is a one bougie tomato. He says, you've also got to keep the tomato shaded. Covering it with the dishcloth will do, and this keeps the skin more supple so it can grow. Wow, interesting. Oh, he's got his little boy holding the tomato. He's so cute. Douglas will now keep the seeds from his huge tomato to continue, continue growing more of the fruit. And how about that big tomato? Will it end up in a beautiful Greek salad or perhaps as part of a giant prosciutto? No, it's due to be sent to the butcher shop in Churchgate Sausages in Essex to be made into tomato and basil sausages. Well, there you go. There's what you do with a giant. That's what you should do with a giant tomato. I'm very impressed at these tomato growing skills that Douglas has over here. And I mean, this photo, the, I mean, the kid is the cute one, but I must say the cover photo here is of Douglas and he is just overjoyed with his tomato and it's it's a very fun photo so if you want to see someone extremely excited about tomatoes you can go check out that story okay and then here's something a little bit unique there is a county jail in mcdonald uh let's see what state is this missouri in mcdonald missouri there is a jail that has now become a, an official historic site. Built, on the, built of stone in 1904, the one-story stone structure served as the McDonald County Jail until 1992, more than eight decades, and it's, it's now listed on the National Register of Historic Places, one of just three sites in the country. Wow, that's pretty impressive. The old McDonald County Jail is the oldest remaining jail. It replaced a log building with only with only access through the roof, which burned in 1888. Yikes. <laughs> I guess you would need one then. Until 1904, when the old jail was built, no jail facility existed in the county, and prisoners which were transported to other communities, including Neosho. Today, the building is used to store county records. The jail was built after voters approved a bond issue for the new jail in November 1902 and was completed in July 1904. A total of 18 sheriffs used the jail. Wow, there's a way to measure history by sheriffs. <laughs> the old jail is located at 200 East 3rd Street in Pineville in Missouri. 
On July 24th of this year, the Missouri State Preservation Office announced that the old McDonald's McDonald County Jail was listed in the National Register of Historic Places by the Department of Interior. This designation is the third for McDonald County. The other two are the McDonald County Historic Landmarks, the Iron Bridge in Powell, and the Historic Courthouse on the Square in Pineville. Located on the historic jail lot set aside in the early years of county for a jail, the old McDonald County Jail will soon receive a plaque to display its place on the National Register of Historic Places. In 1904, Teddy Roosevelt was president, and after the um, this was after the assassination of President McKinley. He won the 1904 November election as well. Average wages were 22 cents an hour, or about 400 dollars a year. Wow. I'd say we got a little inflation over here 115 years later. Um, apparently only 6% of Americans were high school graduates and 95% of doctors did not have a college degree. <gasps> Sugar costs, cost four cents a pound and eggs averaged 14 cents a dozen. The big event of the year was the world's fair in St. Louis, which ran from April 30th to December 1st. 19 million people from 63 countries visited the fair. Foods introduced at the fair included hamburgers, hot dogs, cotton candy, and ice cream cones. The Olympics were also held in St. Louis that year. Wow, big year for St. Louis and for Missouri. They had the fair, they had low sugar prices, they had the Olympics, and they got a jail. <laughs> so now the old McDonald County Jail is a valuable portion of history and will stand the test of time. Old MacDonald had a jail. Sorry, I just couldn't resist. <laughs> so I thought this was kind of a different and fascinating article because, I mean, I don't know if a lot of people give much thought to the jail in their town or especially have it as a historic place. But I think I think it's really interesting to look back on in history this way. And, um, you know, they kind of went over some prices of things and wages and everything. And, um... I think sometimes, um, especially as Americans, we kind of fantasize about um, nostalgia and easier times and things that can, um, you know, maybe seem things seem seemed simpler. But um, while people surely lived high quality lives back then, I think we're so lucky to be alive right now in 2020, where doctors are so highly trained to treat so many more diseases with 125 years more research behind them now. And, um, the safety that is brought with cars and car seats and homes and, um, you know, the safety that we have from natural disasters and in, in buildings, um, how, the majority of the population now has the opportunity to graduate high school and increasingly opportunities are increasing for college as well. And although there's been a lot of inflation, um, I think we're all lucky to have the jobs that we have as well. So fun to look back on history, appreciate where we came from, and also be grateful for what we have now. So I hope you liked those stories about people and cities creating things that they are so proud of. And now it's time for just one more break before we come back for our next fun segment. And I have something unique for the next segment. I not only have a fun poem <laughs> to share that I really love, but um, some tips on how to share positive news while in a pandemic, because we want to remain sensitive and also positive as well. So those tips coming up right after this. Want to find out what movies to go see? Then check out the GSMC Movie Podcast. It's your ticket to the latest movies, whether it's a new blockbuster event, romantic, comedy, or action flick. This show has got it all covered. They talk some what to go see now. Don't bother. What's hot on Netflix and everything in between? That's gsmcpodcast.com backslash movie dash podcast. When it's all about the movies, it has to be this new show. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit gsmcpodcast.com for more info.
Hey yo, welcome back to the show. We just have a little bit more to go. So let's go. <laughs> All right. I have something to share about the moon. So I'm getting excited for Halloween. I always think about the full moon and like just the spooky things. I'm not really too much into the super scary and gory and horror films and stuff. I know that's really fun for some people. It's not quite my cup of tea, but I do like cute little bats made into a garland or <laughs> like a sp spooky witch wreath or something uh, or all, you know, shaping yummy cupcakes like spiders. I like those kind of spooky things. Um, but anyway, <laughs> this article is just getting me kind of in that approaching September spooky moody place because, um, you know, a full moon kind of makes me think of Halloween and the fall. So, uh, this has nothing to do with Halloween, but <laughs> the headline comes from ozarksfirst.com and a full moon that happens only once every three years is going to brighten this, the sky this week in Kansas city, Missouri, for sure this time. A full moon with a special name given only once every three years will rise this week according to to the Farmer's Almanac. The corn moon is a full moon that rises in September. The September full moon is usually called the harvest moon because it's normally the closest full moon to the autumn equinox. Every third year, however, a full moon comes in October that's even closer, making the September full moon a corn moon. This full moon name is attributed to Native Americans because it marked when corn was supposed to be harvested is what the almanac states. At the peak of harvest, farmers can work late into the night by the lights of the moon. This moon will be at its peak on September 2nd. How interesting. I wonder if we'll be able to see the big full moon over here in the west. So that will be something fun to see. All right. Uh, this is a unique little article that I found on fastcompany.com. And it's how to share positive news without sounding insensitive during the pandemic. I thought this was a really good thing to address because it's true. Like, <laughs> obviously people are hurting. People are losing their jobs or things are getting back up. And so people are getting back on their feet. But it's just, it's no doubt that it's been a very tough year, most likely for everybody in the United States for one way or another. Maybe it's been a small convenience. Maybe it's been totally devastating. Um, but of course we want to be in solidarity with our friends who are suffering and offer compassion where we can. But also, you know, it is healthy and necessary for mental health to stay positive. And numerous studies have shown that remaining positive in times of trial can really be helpful. So I thought we'd kind of give this to give our social um, ability a little boost. Um, so sharing, um, wins at this time can feel a little out of touch, but what we need right now is hope. And that's, um, innovation and leadership consultant Val Wright, who is author of rapid growth done right, um, has suggested, su suggested it is understandable. The hesitation people have, the reality is that not every business is failing. Not every individual is failing. If we don't share successes when we have them now, it reinforces the narrative that the whole world is suffering in despair. It creates an endless cycle of doom. And that's a quote directly from her. And so she obviously is for sharing positive stories. So here's some suggestions she gives to sharing that positivity while still remaining sensitive to the difficulties that your friends might be going to might be going through. So the first one is to tailor your talk. The pandemic has created three realities for people, people who are booming and having their best year ever, people who are successful, but are nervous about the future and people who have been significantly impacted by the difficulties of this year. When you talk about your own situation, you need to be aware of your audience. Six months ago, it was easy to have one message for everyone, but today business leaders need to be nuanced in how they communicate to colleagues, employees, and customers. She says, press pause before you share a success story. Put it through the lens of how the person will react. It's one thing to be brilliant, but be brilliant at demonstrating your brilliance. 
Determine where the listener is in terms of the economy. Knowing this helps you craft a message that is not insensitive. You'll need multiple messages to acknowledge what is happening in the world. The way in which you communicate will give people context around your success, an upside for them beyond you simply bragging. If you're talking to someone whose business is booming, such as someone in the technology industry, you can talk about your success, but share how your results come from a special circumstance or how a new creative point of view was in play. She says, there's less caution when the other person is equally booming. If you're talking to someone who is still seeing success, but is cautious, such as someone who is in retail right now, adjust how, how and what you share. She says, acknowledge that not everyone is having the same success. This is when you have to be more specific. Note the steps you've taken and how someone could take it and replicate the success you have, such as flipping to e-commerce or booking appointments over Zoom. If the person has been significantly impacted by the pandemic, such as someone in the hospitality industry, dial down the volume of frequency of your messages, but provide inspiration if you can. She says, people in companies that have been obliterated need hope. They also need disruption. And that can and that can take being blunt. Um, next up, she explains some secrets of success. Sharing success stories of people who have turned their businesses around can really help. For example, Ryan Chora, owner of Chora Events, saw his business model collapse when music festivals had served. Um, the music festivals he served were canceled. He flipped his business model and started providing temporary structuring for hospitals and outdoor dining setups for restaurants. So she says, who's been there and done that? How can you inspire someone to be completely different or disruptive? Ryan held an event last week for events people championing, championing them. He's a role model who's figuring out ways to be successful despite the fact that his industry was obliterated. Um, I think that everyone's trying to do that right now, right? Trying to be creative and find success in, in a different way with their same talents. Um, I know I am usually a live performer, a host and an entertainer, but with audiences not gathering this year, then I kind of had to channel my talents somewhere else. And how lucky was I to find this podcast to do it in? Um, so there's just one example, not the best, but hopefully not the worst. <laughs> um, now, providing hope and positivity may not always land well. Uh, she says, you have to expect the unexpected with how someone might respond. If you're thoughtful in planning and intentional in how you communicate, decide if the feedback you get from people is fair, then adapt future messages. I think this is a really good point because um, while it's very important to be sensitive, kind, and work responsibly in our relationships, I think it's also important that you have a good relationship with yourself and your mind. Um, again, important to lead with kindness, but you get to decide whose opinion matters to you and you could just get to decide how other people's words affect you. And so if you get an opinion that you don't like and then ponder on and, and continue to feel it's not helpful to you. I think it really is okay to dismiss that and then maintain your own positive mindset. And that doesn't require being rude to somebody or completely cutting them off or lashing back at them or anything, but you can just like accept their opinion for what it is and, and move on with what you feel is more true. Um, now at the end here, she says, don't stop sharing. You may wonder why you should talk about success right now, or even feel guilt, but you need to get over those feelings. People want help. Your customers want you to be successful. Your employees want you to know the company is doing well. Investors and your board of directors want to hear success. That is your why. This isn't about being grandiose and showing, aren't I brilliant? It's about lifting others up and instilling confidence in the future. I really liked the approach that Wright took in that, in that article. I think it can, the principle can also be applied to more than business. She was speaking specifically about business there, but we can also use that in our personal lives. Um, I know I used to be really afraid of sharing good news about myself on social media because I was worried that people would think I was self-centered or they would like get jealous for some reason, or it hurt somebody's feelings, um, because they didn't have what, what I was sharing. And, 
And, and again, I think she makes a good point not to brag, but I think sharing your positive experiences are things is something that only you can do. Only you can be yourself, use your talents the way that you can use them and, um, share stories that will probably help somebody and encourage them. Um, if you're you know using them in the, in the best way that you can. So a little encouragement there for you. Um, and to finish up, I want to read a poem that I was sent a very long time ago. Um, just as, as I was endeavoring into my, um, just a big transition in my life. And, um, this poem helped that day. So I want to read it. It's a little cheesy, but I think it really is, um, nice. So here it is. It's called two frogs. Two frogs fell into a cran... I will restart my poetry reading. And then you can snap your fingers afterwards. (laughs) Like we're at a jam, okay? I did not write this. Two frogs fell into a can of cream, or so it has been told. The sides of the can were shiny and steep. The can was deep and cold. Oh, what's the use? said number one. It's plain no helps around. Goodbye, my friend. Goodbye, sad world. And weeping still, he drowned. But number two of sterner stuff, dog paddled in surprise. The while he licked his creamy lips and blinked his creamy eyes. I'll swim at least a while, he thought, or so it has been said. It really won't help the world if one more frog were dead. An hour more he kicked and swam, not once he stopped to mutter, then hopped out from the island he had made of fresh churned butter. Now the author is unknown on that, but I like that story because I think that they're kind of (laughs) ultimately those two approaches to life. You can either take your challenges in stride, do your very, very best, and hope for the best, or you can let your negativity get to you and lose all your hope and, you know, just give up. And I think we've been taught in first grade and beyond every, everyone says the, it's a huge cliche, but that's because it's true. And, and we need that reminder a lot of the times, right? To never give up. When we don't give up, we are giving more control to ourselves. We, again, we can control our attitude. We can control the way that we talk to people. We are so lucky to live in a country where we can control our votes. We can control what we believe. We can control many of the people that are around us and that we associate with. With Many times we can choose our career. We can choose our hobbies, how to spend our time. And again, we can choose what mental state to be in. And we can seek the help that we need to improve our lives. So that's your encouragement for today is to use your superpower, which is your mind, to stay positive and get to work on the things that you feel like will impact your life for the better. Thank you so much for listening to the Golden State Media Concepts America Still Beautiful podcast. Please, 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 please subscribe to the show so you continue to enjoy our episodes. You can follow us on social media as well. You can find GSMC America Still Beautiful on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter by just giving it a search. We love to have you over there on our network. Thanks again for listening, and I encourage you to be kind because you are worth it. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts, America's Still Beautiful podcast, part of the GSMC Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcasts on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Play, or anywhere you find podcasts. Just type in GSMC to find all of our shows. From the GSMC Podcast Network, from social media news to marketing news, and even even weird news. The GSMC Podcast Network has you covered. You can also follow us on Twitter and Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's episode of the Golden State Media Concepts, America's Still Beautiful Podcast.